I know what I want, and I want to move in that direction. But the dissatisfaction of where I'm at is, the, and the power and the momentum of it is overwhelming me, and that's, it's dominating. We have something, a very powerful recommendation. It'll slow you down a little bit. It's a lobotomy. <laughs> but it's equal to the dramatization that you just presented to us. And it's equally ridiculous. Okay. Okay. We know what is gets a foothold, but what is is hard not to notice, isn't it? That's why we guide your mind away from the details of what's bothering you into the laws of the universe and your connection to who you really are. We help you to understand that you have created a vibrational version that you're not that familiar with. You've been building it incrementally each time something goes wrong or each time something is not the way you want it, you launch it. And so it's vivid and it's real and we can see it, but you can't because if you could see it, you would have started out with something different just now. You would have said, I've got this awesome collection of wonderful things and help me move in the direction of those. But you weren't emphasizing the awesome collection of wonderful things. You're emphasizing the collection of things that you know are holding you back. So you got to stop doing that, but that's easier said than done, isn't it? Because humans, you've been almost forced, no one's really forced, but really strongly influenced by those around you to face your reality. Otherwise they think you're not wise. They would call you a foolish dreamer and one who doesn't face reality. And we want you to understand that you're not a foolish dreamer, but you must let the dream, the dream can be non-resistant. And so a non-resisted dream that hasn't manifested is awesome in comparison with reality that makes you unhappy every day. Many humans would say, no, it's better to face a reality that hurts your gut than a dream that makes you sore. And we say, then somebody that says that does not understand the way the laws of the universe work. They don't understand how people move from unwanted to wanted or from less to more or from sick to well or from confused to clarity. In other words, there's a path. There's a path. We call it the path of least resistance. It would be better called the path of most allowance, but we don't ever want you to feel bad about having resistance along your path. We just want you to tune in to your broader perspective who will guide you around the resistance. You have to get rid of it. Just don't keep it active. So we want to hear you. We are not trying to dissuade you from your conversation. We just want you to know that you can get to where you want to be from wherever you are. And the reason that it doesn't happen instantaneously is because you have a bunch of beliefs that are in the way beliefs that you keep making active that are resistant, that hinder the signal and it slows things down. And when things are coming slowly, it's a little bit like Esther's grandchildren are coming to play with her. In fact, they're at the guest house. Now she'll see them tonight when she gets there and they're not going to like the speed of the internet. They're not going to like it. At home in Texas, they've got lightning quick internet. Here, system needs to be upgraded. They're not going to like it. The system is not up to speed with their desire. And they're going to complain incessantly. <laughs> because you know what it's like when you're up to speed. You know what it's like when you just point and there it is, rather than buffer, 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 <laughs> buffer. And most of you are buffering. You've got these desires, but you're not up to speed with them. And so your life just kind of dribbles in and every now and again, something good happens and you go big deal <laughs> because you know, your potential is so much more you say. And so let's have a conversation. You really spoke to my question. I guess what I'm, I'm looking for is the processes of being able to to be able to stay tuned in, turned on and tapped in, in the midst of the day, in the midst of the, the, the chaos, in the midst of the contrast. Well, there are a lot of processes, but just consider this. Consider what vehicle should we talk about? A train or a vehicle on the ground, a car. Just imagine some vehicle moving at a high rate of speed and they're being 
brush and things in the way but the car just blows through it because the momentum of it carries it as opposed to stumbling over each and every <laughs> think about the shock absorbers on your really efficient vehicles and how you can move even on bumpy roads with very little hindrance of the resistance of the bumps that's sort of what we're talking about and so rather than trying to get rid of all of the resistance get out ahead of it and then it becomes this is a new analogy but we think it would be the perfect one for you to hear so imagine that you're moving on an open road at a pretty good clip 70 or 80 miles an hour and your vehicle's a good one and it feels really good and every now and again this is a road kind of like that whack-a-mole you saw how sometimes the things came up so on this road there are little things that keep coming up and when they come up your wheels are gonna hit them or you're gonna try to swerve around them and you can get really good you could go so fast that you could mow them over but your car will wear out soon it's hard on you or you could be really efficient at swerving around them but then you, you better slow down and so now you're not really enjoying where you're going as much because you're having to tend to those things that keep popping up so what we're encouraging is that by getting out ahead of it through meditation or appreciation meditation or daydreaming we'll talk about all of those things what happens is by achieving a different vibrational frequency you're not calling those resistant things up to meet you so they all stay below ground so you're just moving along resistance free that's a pretty good analogy isn't it rather than being sloppy in your thinking and introducing all the resistance to your trail and then having to deal with the resistance you get out ahead of it and the resistance just doesn't keep coming up that's how it works something just came to me as you're as you're speaking that I have a, a timetable on when I want to manifest you know the things I want and what's showing up for me right now is that that timetable is it's a, trigger. it's a trigger it's a trigger for me to feel getting... anxiety yeah yeah it's just it's it's a trigger you know? so, so so do I just let it go and just say when it happens it happens well, that's the thing people are teaching you from a place of wanting to motivate you to get out of bed and get out there and offer effort and offer some sacrifice and eke out a comparatively better living to those that are not even trying then goal setting falls into that category and most people even we might say no we can't say it we can't say it's better than nothing because it really isn't because it gives you misinformation it just makes you try harder and sacrifice more and it makes you tougher as you hit those resistant bumps that slow you down so rather than setting a goal that harasses you we would encourage you to seek the pleasure of alignment but before you can do that you have to know these things you have to know you sifted and sorted and did step one and step two has been done for you you have to know that what you're asking for is a done deal that you set the goal in step one your inner being took care of it and now you've got one thing to do and one thing to do only and that's line up with what you've asked for if you're setting an accurate goal if you were really telling it like it is and someone says what's your goal you would say it's now what yeah it's now what yeah it's already done what I've asked for is done where is it well that's a little hard to explain so I'm not gonna try <laughs> say to them oh it's one of those imaginary things your friends might say it's not imaginary it's gestating it's becoming it's gathering momentum and cooperative components and it's awesome and I'm coming into alignment with it well what's your timetable when it's ready <laughs> what's your timetable when I'm ready to let it in when I have stopped beating up on myself through sacrifice and struggle when I've come to the place of enough worthiness that I will let it in that's the timetable well how long is that gonna take longer now that I'm talking with you <laughs> Because you're activating all that old stuff that doesn't work for anybody. 
You see, you might say to them, you see, I've decided that I don't want a mediocre creation. I just don't want to try a little harder than most so that I get a little more than most. I want to enact the awesome power of non-resistant thought. But in order to discover and personally utilize the awesome power of non-resistant thought, I got to stop thinking thoughts that are resistant. And when I look at what is, what is is resistant to what's becoming because what is is not enough money in my bank account and what is is too much hard work and what is is doing too many things that I don't want to do and what is is putting up with the status quo and what is is settling and compromise and sacrifice what is is in the way of what's coming. So every time I focus upon what is, I'm in the way of what's becoming because they're different. What's in my vortex is prosperity and agility and clarity and the ability to be or do or have anything that I desire. And I've been living enough step one and I've put so many pieces, ingredients into my vortex and they've gathered all the cooperative components so much that I can't even recognize the awesomeness of what's in the process of becoming for me. So all I have to do, we're speaking from your perspective to a friend who's wanting to understand. All I have to do is stay out of my own way by not trying to make it happen too soon or by not demanding that it be ready before I am. I'm just practicing alignment, 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 alignment. And you know what begins to happen? You see, since this vibrational reality, we call it a vortex because it spins like that. It does. It gathers momentum like that. And this vibrational reality, this vortex, this vortex of yours is high non-resistant frequency. So in order for you to tune into it rather than the not enoughness of reality, you have to quiet the not enoughness thoughts. Otherwise your vibration won't rise to it. So meditation is a really good way. When you quiet your mind, you stop thought. And when you stop thought, you stop resistant thought and your vibration will rise. And when your vibration rises, then what's in the vortex begins to occur to you. We've given it a new description recently because we want you to understand how it comes. It comes in the form of impulse or insight or daydream. Esther's discovering that if she will meditate and quiet her mind, and then just allow her mind to wander once she's under the influence of that, that these delicious ideas are flowing to her and she's no longer trying to put the pieces of them together to make something happen with them. She's watching them like a pleasurable movie because what these dreams are, they're not actionable right now. It's not get on them and ride them right now. They are evidence of your alignment. The daydreams are evidence of your alignment. So the more you're receiving those dreams, then the more evidence you have of that alignment. And when that becomes the momentum that you're reaching for, then these thoughts begin to turn to impulses and the impulse then pays off. It's like you have actual awareness that an idea that came led to this and led to this and led to this and led to this and suddenly right here within your grasp is something that you've really been wanting and it doesn't feel like this far-fetched out there in the cosmos sort of thing it's real so can you feel what we are wanting to accomplish here we want you to feel the realness of this vibrational reality and we want you to feel the nowness of it and there's a big difference between that and setting a goal. You could set a goal that is like this. It's more like a segment intention. It's my intention to sit and quiet my mind and allow my vibration to rise. That's a really good intention. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next